Okay, okay you are. Good morning, um, healing parents. Uh, welcome to our last meeting of the 2015-16 school year. Um, I would first like to introduce our um, board. It is raining and awful outside, which the folks on Video Land may or may not know. Um, so we are missing our treasurers that are probably stuck in traffic. Come but one. Um, somebody may be coming in. Um, to my right is Mary Elise Kelly, um, my co-chair. To my left is Rachel Steyer, our wonderful um, secretary, taking our minutes of every moment. And um, to her left is uh, uh, Director Carter. And I would like to begin with um, having Director Carter give her um, Magnet Director's Report. All right. <coughs> Sorry for the pause, they were talking in my ear. Um, <laughs> I was waiting to be sure I didn't hear my name. Um, so uh, the, the biggest news right now, quite honestly, is um, we're wrapping up a wonderful year. Um, and uh, I know I, I will go ahead and, and address something that has been floating around, I believe, out there on the, the, the parent listserv. Um, there, there's been a lot of talk on the listserv about admissions of out-of-district kids. Um, and and we, we have addressed that in previous meetings, um, but I'll just go ahead and clarify real quick. Um, uh, since, well, in the past, it's been relatively normal for um, people in out of the district to, to be able to apply. Um, however, in order to actually attend, if accepted, they had to move into the into Austin ISD. Um, this year, as some of you may recall, um, we as a as magnet faculty decided we we didn't feel real good about that. We hated the fact that um, there were seats being taken up by out of district kids for for those who uh, live within Austin ISD. So um, we we decided to 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 change that for this year. Um, however, after after doing that, then some, we'll just say some things happened. And um, as a result, we, we this year, um, meaning students applying for next year, there, there are students who will be attending the Keeling Magnet Program next year who when they applied, lived out of district. However, in order for them to attend next year, they will have their primary residence within Austin ISD. So, it's really and truly ultimately no different than it has been. Um, however, moving forward, we have already changed the language of what will be publicized on our website and in the application for next year, we've changed the language so that we will not be accepting students who don't start out the year living within Austin ISD. Um, that's not the exact language. I'm not going to try to remember exact words right this second, but moving forward, that, that will not, the way it has been will change. Um, now, the, I've, I've heard people worried that out-of-district kids may have taken up seats, taken a seat away from an AISD kid. That is not the case. Um, because of the way that it transpired, we're, we actually will end up with more kids. We did not eliminate seats because of the out-of-district kids. That is not the case. Um, so, there you go. Now, the better thing that I have to say um, is that uh, I just, I just, I mean, this is a time when, and there aren't many people here, but um, those of you who have been here um, for, for three years and have eighth graders running away, um, it's been an absolute pleasure working with you guys. I know, I'm sorry. I knew you, I, I knew you were going to do that. Um, <laughs> but um, anyway, I've, uh, you know, I've, I've, this is, I'm finishing out two and a half years, so I've been here for at least part of all three of those years, and it's been an absolute pleasure. And this place could not even begin to be what it is without y'all's support. 
So those of you that are graduating and moving on and leaving us, um, thank you a million times. Thank you even for funny faces. Um, and uh, don't be strangers. We'll, uh, we'll still be rocking it over here and would love to see you anytime. And those of you who are not leaving us uh, will uh, have many more terrific years to come. So that's all I've got to say. Well, thank you. Thank you, Diane. That was very sweet. And we, um, those, that, those of us that are graduating, I want to speak for the girl in purple back there, are very much um, the silent purple girl, uh, are very much going to miss Keely. Um, it's been a great three years. Uh, but on that note, I wanted to remind everyone that we are um, being videotaped today, so anything that you say will be um, heard on YouTube at some future date. So without um, further delay, I'd like to introduce um, Principal Coburn to give the <laughs> principal's report, if she's available. <laughs> um, I think she's walking in. <laughs> Don't put me on camera this morning. Oh, yes. That's not fair. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes, I am here. My report is that we are at, what is it, 10 days? I, I haven't counted. I'm not sure. Um, so if you stand in the hallway, nine days, the kids are wild. Because they are trying to get every word out to the friends that they won't see this summer during the passing period. And it's quite entertaining to watch. And I think the teachers are kind of in a similar place. I think you're right. <laughs> um, so that's that's kind of what we've got going. We're preparing for sending our 8th graders off. So if you have 8th graders, we'll see you on June 2nd. Um, they will have their big fun day on the 31st. Uh, if your student is getting an award from a teacher, you'll see that coming home soon. We're doing it a little bit differently this year. Um, teachers express that it's a bit awkward to have all of the students in the gym when maybe 10% or less are getting an award. So we're shifting the structure a little bit this year and doing a breakfast and awards um, assembly for the parents and students who are receiving them. Um, so if your student is receiving an award this year, um, you should get that end of this week or early next week coming home. Um, other big things. We are kind of mentally almost done with this year and planning for next year. Um, and <coughs> thanks to uh, the help of the silent lady in purple. Uh, we are building um, a new website that is much easier to follow. Where Just you can in time for click. us to leave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be able to actually click one name and get directly to a teacher's website rather than the rabbit hole. Um, there will be direct links to Hornet Herald and subscribing to all things on the home page. It's much nicer and um, easier for you guys and frankly for us also. Um, we The plan is to get that out not this weekend but the following weekend so you guys have access to it before you leave for the summer. Um, yeah, so that's fun. That's coming. Um, other big stuff that's coming. That's really the big one right now. Yeah. The website. Um, and working campus-wide on making sure teacher websites oh. are easy to navigate. Sorry. <laughs> I completely forgot, and I'm sorry, but um, on May 27th, it's uh, Professional Development Day. Um, we're actually having our own little Keeling conference. Um, our teachers will be presenters. Um, as you guys know, our teachers spent time uh, shadowing kids and observing each other and learning a lot here from each other um, this year and then this this conference is just sort of a culmination of that learning and, and we're giving teachers the opportunity to either choose to present um, in a presentation session like at a conference um, or have like a poster presentation to share their work if they didn't want to speak for 45 minutes um, and uh, so yeah, that, that we're, we're excited about that. And uh, the, the, the idea is that, I mean, this is the first time we've done this, so it's, it's for us. Um, but the idea is that hopefully moving forward, we would like to invite maybe some of you guys to come check some of it out. So um, I see you sneaking away. Anyway, um, there you go, yes. I don't know if you guys are planning on videotaping it or parts of it, but I think you should. Just <coughs> you can use that as marketing tools 
sometime later if it turns out to be really good. We can do that. What you doing Friday? The uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. You uh, hey, you brought up the idea. That means the volunteer. <laughs> 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 I know a Mr. Webster that works around here somewhere. Yep. But anyway, I think it could be really yeah. good to show how our faculty gets involved in the actual, um, you know, learning process, and that's a really good marketing thing. Think about that. Mm -hmm. There'd be lots of editing. Well, yes. <laughs> and that's probably why you don't want to pair teachers with my <laughs> right. oh, Entertaining. Yes. Would it be all day during the school hours? Um, and that probably alone, morning, a yeah. little bit past lunch, but yeah. not the entire day. Right. Other questions about what's going on? Yes. Uh, not that I really care, but I don't. I just want to make sure I'm. When do we get star results? Or did, did they come in the mail or what? Um, if you have an a student that tested an eighth grader who did testing earlier, they are in the office right now being folded to mail to you. We will send them in the mail because we know your children may not actually make it home with it. So they're coming in the mail. Um, the, all of the other star results are supposed to be in between June 3rd and June 14th. Um, EO, Algebra 1 will be supposedly back by June 3rd, though I'm sure you all follow the news and know that this year has been a bit wobbly. Um, but we're expecting Algebra 1 June 3rd and then everything else before June 14th, so we'll send those home as well. Okay. I have a question. Um, about the out-of-district students, um, you mentioned that uh, no, um, that bringing in the out-of-district students didn't eliminate any uh, positions for in-district students. I have, I mean, if the program is oversubscribed and we're still marketing more for the program, how is it that over 600 students applied, they were probably in-district students, and you're still accepting out-of-district students? And how is it that those out-of-district students don't take away a space for an in-district student? I just don't understand. We have more students coming in next year than we should have in our that we than we should have. That's the situation. Our teachers are preparing for it. We're doing some funny things with space. We might end up with a portable that we don't want um, to handle this large class, and it won't happen again. So we admitted everyone that we should have admitted in district to have the number that we should have and then had to, then we took additional students on top so we're going to have one slightly uncomfortable year um, but because of that we didn't lose students who we would have otherwise accepted that were already living in the district does that make sense not really i'm not sure what you mean by the the additional students on top of on top of what i guess what was planned so we have a number of students that we plan to admit. We admitted all of those students from current AISC residents, and then from current AISC residents. Then the other students came in after the, on, on the top of that. So we have more students than we should have. It'll be a slightly uncomfortable year, but that kept us from losing students who were already in the district who we otherwise would have accepted. So next year's number of students that we admit will be smaller and back to what it should look like. But just to clarify, this is what I understand you saying. When you say the next year will be smaller, it will be back to your regular class size. We're yes. not going to make a much smaller size to compensate for extra kids in here right now. No. We'll have one large class moving up over a couple of years, yeah. but we'll be back to the normal class size in sixth grade next year. Cool. Yeah. Other questions? things that you think we should be thinking about that we maybe aren't because what I've learned in year one of principalship is that you become slightly delirious <laughs> so, so based on your plan for next year, has, has the <coughs> district head honcho people approved that plan yet? Are the they, numbers? No, the, you have to be in the district the whole year. Do they get a say? Or are they going to come back and say, I mean, uh, what's the process, I guess, is what I'm really District has approved it, provided that we explicitly stated in writing before we send things out. 
um, verbally. They will get the, the new application with the language printed in it in writing this summer so that um, we get more than verbal. Okay, good. I just wanted to say thank you for all what you do. It has been an amazing year. This was our first. So ah. it's, it's been a great year. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, I'm going to go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Principal Cooper and Director Carter. Um, I would like everyone to look at, Rachel passed out um, the minutes on from the last meeting. Um, and if everybody can just take a couple of minutes to look that over, I'd like to um, get a, entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Um, and while we're doing that, um, uh, Director Carter went to go grab um, Ms. Tasmin. She is going to talk to us about the science uh, department's conference this year. Um, and I would also like to recognize several of the committee um, chairs and committees that helped us um, do everything that we did this year. So I don't think I see Stephanie Darn again, but Stephanie helped um, put together all of the committee chairs and get the committees set up. So and that was sort of a new position for um, KMAG, but it's been a very big help for us to have someone that's in charge of making sure all the spots are filled. And um, the grade level field trip, field trip chairs, Nicole Austin did 6th grade, Linda Chanow 7th, and Gita 8th. Uh, and I know that Gita's had a lot of fun with the 8th grade because we've had a lot of different um, <laughs> celebrations this year and still to <coughs> uh, Brooke Wagon um, led up our new parent reception, new student registration committee. Uh, and Molly Kohler, and I know Gina Vance was big on that um, with our shadowing. We could not have had entertained. How many shadows did we have this year? 491. 491 <laughs> shadows without their tireless help. So thank you for that. Um, and then Guy I3 um, from Monathon helped with the magnet offer, office and teacher support. Jenny Floyd did our book club. Raji and Leslie Dover did our um, book fair. Rao Kondapali with Gina Vance, um, and I think you might have had someone else um, help you, uh, did the uh, magnet fair and showcase the fall and the spring. And then last but not least, I would like to give um, a big thank you to Becky Swan, who um, headed up our fundraising last year, and a little birdie told me she's willing to do it again next year. So, <laughs> huge. Thank you to all of you, and um, I don't know if anybody would like to say anything. Um, oh, this has means here. So if anybody has anything to say about their committee, um, I would love y'all to talk after um, we hear from the science department, and especially you, Becky. I would like to hear from you. So just to talk about fundraising for no next pressure. year. So. All right, Ms. Tasmeen, thank Hi. you for coming. Hi. I'm going to apologize in advance because we, um, we did definitely talk about putting together a formal presentation, and then we totally dropped the ball. But there's a lot of I already in the told it. We're hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I can move over there. You want me to Wherever, Wherever you want. You're fine. So, good. so um, I'm just going to be real honest about the experience because it was, it was first of all, thank you so much for sending us because it was awesome. I don't think I've ever been to any sort of professional development that was just so invigorating. Um, so I, I've done CAST before and that's the Texas um, Science Association and that was in Austin but like nine years ago and that's when I first started teaching so it was like way too overwhelming and then I never ended up like filtering in how to use all the resources. Um, so. This time, each of us individually, I think we did a really great job of um, dividing and conquering because there's literally like 500 sessions a day and there's just no way that we can go to all of them because even if you go to one really amazing one, you're missing eight other ones that are really amazing. So it was really nice to have a big group of people. Um, our whole seventh grade team went and then it was me for eighth grade and Zoe Jones for sixth grade. Um, and we had a lot of overlapping interests, so um, Mary McClellan and I spent like a, an exorbitant amount of time previewing the sessions and trying to come up with like what schedule we were going to do, and then I feel like I just wasted time because I got there and I was like, no, I'm just going to do this. <laughs> so, um, so we individually, 
I feel like we, there was just, there's never enough time for anything, but um, at the end of the day, we would just be so like brain fried that we had seen so many things and learned so many things and then we didn't really have a chance to really debrief with each other, but we shared some things um, and each of us kind of created, this is McClellan, so she's a, she's a comp book person. Um, but so she just kind of kept track of all of her sessions in here, so if, I'll pass this around if you want to look at some of the resources that she got. Um, Amy won some free sharks because uh, she wins things randomly, so, <laughs> but I was like, okay, I guess I'll do the shark dissection in marine bio, so we're still going to work out when that's going to happen. Um, I think one of the biggest things that we learned as a team was about the NGSS, which is the Next Generation Science Standards, and I think that's really important for us because we really like to try to align with what's going on across the nation, not necessarily with just our Texas standards, because um, they don't necessarily really apply, <laughs> apply to what we're trying to do here. Um, so there was a lot of uh, new technology out there, too, that I think uh, was interesting. I, the person who was supposed to do the 3D printing talk didn't show up, and then I didn't want to miss a different session to go to, so I, I didn't make that session uh, work out. But it was kind of, it was really nice to just see a lot of teachers from different states and like how they do, how their standards are different from Texas, and just what resources are available at different schools. <coughs> um, I think the biggest takeaway for me personally, I went to a short course, so instead of the hour-long session, I took like a three-hour um, course and it was based on ocean plastic pollution. Oh man, <laughs> like totally broke my heart. <laughs> um, plastic is just such a humongous issue. It's like so pervasive that um, it totally reformed the way I'm going to teach my marine bio class. Um, so I have already started incorporating some of it. Um, we dissected these albatross boluses. Um, and you can only get them four per year from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. And the person who told me about it said, just put in the request, tell them you're an educator, and you'll get them, but it might take a full year. I got them in two weeks. <laughs> so I have four sitting in the freezer right now. Um, we just did a virtual dissection this year, but um, I, I just didn't want to destroy them just yet until I have a larger set. <coughs> so, um, so that was probably the biggest thing for me in terms of just, just redoing curriculum in general. Like, we could, I could do the whole eighth grade curriculum based on that one sustainability issue. Um, so that's something that I'm really excited about. And then the other thing was um, ArcGIS, which is a ge geospatial mapping program. Um, that's also totally free to us, um, but we still haven't quite figured out how to get students signed up. Um, I have a few students trying to tweak it just for the project that they're working on right now, but it's, it's a really cool um, way to just overlay information. I mean, we could map incidents of volcanoes versus poverty. Um, and they just, um, it's just the newest way of like looking at data, um, I think, in science. So that's me personally. Um, Mary McCullen said NGSS standards. That was something, that was something new to us too. Like when we were looking at the sessions, we were like, what is NGSS? <laughs> so we started looking at those, um, those standards. Um, there's a lot of sessions on project-based learning, which is something that we really like doing here at Keeling and, and just new ways of implementing that and executing it well. Um, again, I don't know how, how better to say it, but we just saw really a lot of really cool stuff. <laughs> um, there were lots of demonstrations, lots of free resources, and I'm still trying to like um, file it all away into where I can use it in different units. Um, and then Mary said for seventh grade she wanted to do something um, for biomimicry, and so she was able to go to a session for that and got some project ideas for that. But we, I feel like we just learned too many things. <laughs> and we just needed an extra day, I think, to like debrief with each other. Because um, we're yet to have that conversation as a whole department. I mean, we've kind of talked about it at lunch and split off to our own grade levels. But it's a, it was an awesome experience and really overwhelming. <laughs> um, but thanks so much for sending us, because it was nice to not have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ms. Tesney, I wanted to um, just kind of draw a let everyone in video land and everyone here know. Um, so KMAG, one of, um, one of our goals is to be able to send um, teachers each year, a department, to a conference. 
and um, the conference is not usually in Texas. Where was this conference? It was in Nashville. In Nashville, okay. This was Austin's doppelganger city, by the way. I was, we were like, what, where are we? <laughs> and the reason why we don't send them somewhere in Texas is, um, and this was new to me when I came to Keeling, I did not realize that our Keeling teachers develop their own curriculum. They are not mandated, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're not mandated to follow um, the Texas standards, the Texas curriculum, so they get to develop their own. Please please correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, but um, they we are, are mandated to cover to all cover, of the Texas but standards. We do how we cover them. <laughs> Right, and so therefore the teachers are given leeway to develop their own curriculum based on those standards plus what else above and beyond what they want to cover. Is that yep. correct? Am yep. I saying that? Okay. So going to Nashville or going to wherever the conference is held is important because you can't go to a conference in Texas and be able to achieve what your goals are. So if you go right. somewhere else and you said you were collaborating with teachers from other states, then you'll get that information. Yeah, Is that I mean, I'm sure they. We still have. I'm sure each department still has stuff that's available. But you know, again, with the funding and then taking time off of work, a lot of the Texas ones happen like over your break mm -hmm. or like or over, over spring summer, break, yeah. and it's like or summer, and so it's difficult for us to make those. Um, and those end up usually being like on our on our on my own. I used to go. I went when I was. When I first started teaching, because that first year, my the U Teach program paid for it, because I was they had like a first year teacher. I don't know what the word is <laughs> support system. <laughs> um, but yeah, but it was really it was just I wish we could go every year, but I know we have to cycle through departments. But that was the first time science was well, gone. and that actually was something that um, KMAG as a group has been talking about is trying to. Um, <coughs> The, there was a huge generosity, outpouring of generosity um, this year with um, funding for KMAG. And because of that, one of the ideas we were thinking about is being able to send the departments more often rather than we have four departments, so we send them once every four years. And, so, And I know one of the big goals, too, is for, for us to present what we're doing at NSTA. But, I mean, <clears throat> so if that's, that's going to happen again in the next four years, like you have to submit a year in advance. And so... Um, but, I mean, it would be nice to be a presenter, too. But. So I would love to invite you to keep collaborating um, with you as the science department and then maybe talk to the other teachers from the different departments to collaborate with the board for next year um, because I know that that is something that we've talked about and maybe even having it every couple of years or different parts of groups go, yeah, just more often than that. So we would like to do that. And because Becky Swan um, is one of the reasons why we had um, success such a successful um, fundraising program this year, I have no doubt that she'll be successful again next year. So with the money that comes in from y'all in video land, which we need, and Becky's going to speak about it in a little bit, no please, do, <laughs> please do keep supporting because um, it's wonderful for us to be able to send these teachers, which is why we have our kids at Keeling, because they are getting an education they would not get anywhere else because of the dedication. Like, well, and it's just, it was just so exciting. You, know, you get to that point where you're like, I don't have any more creativity. <laughs> and then I went to the conference and I was like, I have so many things I want to do. <laughs> so. And we would love you to be able to present. Um, I think, I mean, personally, I know my, my children have benefited from being in your class, mm -hmm. so I think you would make an excellent presenter. So thanks for letting us know that this is something that you need to sign up for in advance, so hopefully we can make that happen. Yeah. I mean, I know that that is one of the goals that we have is to support the teachers, so knowing this, maybe we can send you all, you know, some of you to conferences each year or something, so. Maybe we can go there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That would be good too. So, is there anything else you would like to share? No, I think that was it. Um, again, sorry, we were going to make like a nice little video and everything. And then just Y'all are so busy. We just appreciate your Yes. We well, this happened like video. at the end of March. You'd yes. think we would have had some time to like put something together. Well, I have one comment on this then. Uh, just to consider get, getting the best benefit out of this, maybe work it into their schedule. We've, we've got their days off that they're going to be attending this conference. Maybe give them the first day back also as a day off for them to get together and pull so all the notes. So Zoe so Jones and I actually just took the day off. <laughs> uh, well, our flight was super delayed and we were up from like 4 o'clock in the morning, but I was like, I, I'm just going to use that day and like try to put everything together. Yeah. Um, but we just did it individually. We still like she's she she focused a lot of her stuff on her astronomy class, and I kind of went in with how do I change marine bio and how do I incorporate 
3D printing and ArcGIS into eighth grade science. So we all kind of had different focuses, um, and I still haven't had a chance to really sit down with her and grab whatever resources she has for astronomy. Yeah, I was just wondering if so. they can even build it into your schedule to say, okay, you guys are going to have rounds after you do this with your department. Yeah. Maybe it, not the day you get back, you're exhausted. Maybe like a week after, though, or something where it's still fresh and you've had time to get yeah. things together. It, and we, we did do a good job of, at least I, at least I feel like per grade level, we've tried to talk to our teams about, hey, I got all this stuff, here's all these files, like, I don't know, we should have we should been a little bit better about creating maybe like a Google forum for us to be like, hey, I got this, here, it's in this folder. It's something we can plan for, definitely, even if it's just the nearest PD day, I'll be honest, teachers, we do have teachers who request, hey, our department, our grade level team needs this day, and we give it to them. But teachers have a hard time asking for a fourth day when they've been at when we've been, yeah we were already are so committed yeah. dates, yeah. they don't do it. Oh, we, <laughs> yeah. we, 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 we were on the plane when he was presenting, but we saw him in the elevator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's so, yeah, so that was something also that I think that we just talked about as a team. Like we were trying to minimize the number of days that we were out from mm -hmm. school. But I really wish I was in Nashville for that whole week because I would have gotten a chance to enjoy Nashville and be present for the whole conference. Like I feel like we missed out on parts of it just because we were trying to get back. <laughs> They're too committed. They are very committed, and speaking of committed, um, she mentioned that the conference was in March, and I know from personal experience that Ms. Tazim was very busy after school every single day in uh, March and April working um, with the students for track. She's also a track coach, so many of our teachers also wear other hats, so they are very, very committed. So thank you yeah. on both fronts for thank that. You guys so. for and took a group of kids to she, Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, she's not telling you all the wonderful other things that she does as well too. So oh. we thank you. And oh, it does not be meetings more often. <laughs> <laughs> it does not. It does not go unnoticed. So thank you. No, thank you guys so much. We can't do what we do without you. So thanks. Thank you. All right. Miss Tesney. Miss Tesney. Oh, we, we want to see it. Mary, can we see oh, it? Can we return it? Later? Okay. Can we we'll return it? it? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's McClellan's. Okay. okay. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll okay. bring it. Thank you. Um, all right. I would like um, the minutes have. I don't want to forget, um, so Rachel can have everything wrapped up for the year. The minutes from the April 14th meeting are on everyone's table. Um, does anyone have any questions about the minutes from the last meeting? No questions. Does. Um, could I entertain a motion to I motion to accept the minutes as written as from the April 14th on for 14th. April 14th meeting. Wonderful. I second. Second. Um, any um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any those any opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Wonderful. Um, Becky Swan, may I first of all I just want to thank I did sort of already because it is Becky's she did a wonderful job in her committee. Um, of raising all these funds for this year. What was our total? Do you remember? It was about 45,000. About 45,000 and in the past we were pretty lucky 30, to have 30, 35. Yeah, and that was a stretch. So I know at least yeah. since I've been here, I think um, we were closer to somewhere yeah. under 20, 28,000. 20, 28, okay, so this was huge. Um, but Becky, I'm just wondering, would you do you mind just kind of talking to us about um, our plans going forward? Are you planning to do similar things, or do you mind coming up to? And so, or okay, awesome. you can, okay, the video. Thank you. Um, I wasn't planning to present here, but I was planning to present to Miss Carter, so this works out oh, right. Okay. <laughs> um, and she's not here, so I'll do it again. Um, uh, last year, um, we did. Well over four, collect over well over forty thousand dollars, and it's just through two things. One is just direct donations from parents, and matching gifts from employers. That is all we seek in this no hassle fundraiser. Period. <laughs> um, we tried it out this last year that we did for a defined period of time, and that was met with enthusiasm. And we're going to do that again this coming year. And in fact, this year we're going to make it even shorter. It will be four weeks long. Um, most of it will be electronic. Uh, pay when you know when's convenient for you, rather than maybe on back to school night when you're really just trying to meet the eight or maybe 16 teachers you need to meet. 
um, the things we learned, the direct communications to the emails to parents were the most effective. Um, so uh, really, we're going to work with Ms. Carter and Ms. Coburn. Can we have one, maybe two emails that go directly to tell you, you know, how to easily donate? Um, the other things that we kept it, you know, keeping it really simple and Gita's videos really helped out a lot too. So we're going to be doing those again. Um, the biggest thing we need to work on is um, a clear distinction and a connection with KMAG and PTA fundraising. Uh, work together, so I really want to work closely with the PTA fundraising chair. And what kinds, you know, how are we approaching this together? Because uh, in the end, all of the fundraising benefit uh, really should benefit the school. Um, and then uh, one of the committee members that I'm, I'm seeking this year is a, uh, someone to specifically work on matching gifts. We made great strides this year in really increasing those numbers, but we should probably do a better job of following up with those organizations to say thank you and this is how it helped. Um, I, we would love to send more teachers to more conferences. Our goal will remain about the same, uh, but we went way over our goal with only 35% of the families donating. So um, that, that says something there. Our goal is never 100%. It's our goal is everyone who can, if you could contribute, we would appreciate it. So that's, any questions? Well, and Becky, I'm sure you're going to need help um, in, yes. in the upcoming year. So please, everybody in Video Land, please um, do seek her out. And if you need her contact information, uh, feel free to talk to one of us on the board. Um, does anyone else on one of the other committees have anything to report um, or they would like to speak about for next year? Anyone? Um, is there someone here from PTA that would want to give a PTA report? I'm not. All I, all I was asked to share with you for today is um, that we are still looking for some positions uh, on the PTA committee and if you're interested to um, be involved in PTA, please contact Heather Way and uh, she will let you know what positions are available and if you would like to create something for PTA, you're welcome to. Thank you. And um, KMAG will need um, plenty of volunteers um, uh, going forward for next year. And so please, if there's something that you're interested in, please um, contact, um, contact us and let us know. And I'm sure we can plug you in. Um, I'd like to turn over um, to Raji and ask for a brief treasures report. Well, it was a really great year this year, thanks to all of you. And uh, the bank account is sitting very happy. But I can't give you an exact number because teachers are sending in requests as a last ditch effort to reach us before school is over. So I have about seven checks to give out today, at Christmas in May, and a lot of technology, a lot of calculators, a lot of books. I mean, there's a new, uh, Amy Warshower's got a new math games class, so she's got a stack of games coming. All kinds of good stuff uh, we're funding right now, so I don't have an actual number, but by the end of the year I could give you actual number at the end of the year. Okay, well thank you. Thank you very much, Raji. And her position um, seems to be one that goes unthanked and unappreciated. And I will tell you from uh, three years now, having um, seen what the treasurers have done, uh, she works her little tail off. So I appreciate her. She does not actually come from a background of accounting, um, and yet she picked it up and ran with it. and. Ken Havernack, our former um, treasurer, just kind of had everything in his head, and um, she's been trying to pull it all out of his head and kind of put it into um, paperwork and processes, and uh, Raji, I just, we couldn't have done this without you, so thank you, and I know Jenny has played a part, and she's not here today, so thank you also, Jenny, but Raji, thank you, and more importantly, she's going to be coming back. Um, so, unless anyone has any um, other reports to make, I would like to go ahead and install our new officers for next year. So each year in May, um, we usually have the current officers step down and the new officers um, move up. And first of all, I before we install the new officers, I just want to recognize 
to my left, Rachel Steyart has taken our minutes um, every meeting this year. I'm not even sure she's had a sub once, which it's a lot of work. She does this both um, for these meetings and then afterwards we usually meet with Director Carter to kind of talk about funding and <coughs> try to approve requests and so forth that the teachers have made. Um, and she's taken those minutes too. So thank you for doing that tirelessly and definitely so really appreciate it. And then um, Jenny, we thank you. I know you're, hopefully you'll listen to this in video land, but thank you so much for, Jenny has been a co-treasurer. She was first with Ken and then with Raji, so two years, and she is graduating as an eighth grade um, parent and moving on. And then last but not least, I couldn't have done it without Mary Lise Kelly, um, who has been co-chair for the past year and then secretary the prior year. So now she's had two years on the board and she's willing to work um, as a third. So I would like to ask our new officers for this um, upcoming year to stand up so we can recognize you and then I'm going to introduce them all. Um, can you guys all stand up like right here in front of the camera? Stand up, stand up. <laughs> okay, new <laughs> and the officers for next year. Oh, right, next year's no. officers. So you just... <laughs> <laughs> nice try though. We have to be on the video. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. yes. We so don't need video to be on the video. I don't have to watch it. No. <laughs> no. 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 We certainly don't. You don't no people watch. watch because that's what people I would like to introduce our board for next year, and then while I do that, I'm going to introduce them, and I'd love for them to say, um, uh, introduce them, who their children are, and, and if you've had other kids through Keeling, then please let us know that too. So. Um, first of all, I'm going to start with Rachel Steyer. Um, she is going to be continuing on as secretary um, for next year. And then Mary Lise Kelly and Steve Rosen will be our co-chairs. And Raji Parmaswamy, Parma we've known each other Raji. since I was four. I mean, since my kids were four, not I was four. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's um, Raji Warren. Okay. Close. Okay, and I'm always going to butcher her name, but she knows I love her dearly. And then Patchy Karnak? Yes. Did I get that kind yeah. of right? Okay. <laughs> they will be our co-treasurers for next year. And then Rachel, can you tell us um, who your children are and if you've had others at Keeling? Um, I have a current seventh grader, Alex, at Keeling, and my I have a junior at Lhasa, but she did not come to Keeling, unfortunately. No. Um, I have a junior at Lhasa, and she did go to Keeling. And I have an eighth grader here who will be at Lhasa next year, and I have a fifth grader at Kiker who will be here next year. So we're very excited to have three more years. <laughs> three more years. <laughs> and I've got a current sixth grader. Okay, uh, I'm Steve Rosen. I have two sixth graders here. Uh, those are our only two children, Kira and Ray. I've been told that I'm uniquely qualified to be here because I'm the only one of the white chromosomes. <laughs> <laughs> my wife reminds me I have in common with 98% of the criminal population. I'm to do better for this group. I'm Prachi Karnik and I have uh, sixth grader Arnold who is here and my younger one is six years younger so I hope one day he'll join. <laughs> Well, thank you all. And Steve, on that note, um, this is actually the first year where we have not had a, a male representative on the board. And um, I believe Ken was on the board for five years. He was on for a long time. Um, so he was, and I'm not really sure before that because it's well, well beyond my experience. But um, I present to you the new 2016-2017 Cake Bag Board. Thank you all. Yeah. All right. Does um, Ms. Gonzalez, do you have any kind of parent communication that you would like to speak about um, for now or for the summer or anything for next year? Um, actually, uh, what I'd like to do is remind everyone that open enrollment is still going on. We'd like to get all of our Keeling students uh, registered for next year. So you can go to um, your cloud, your parent cloud, if you've got one, and register your students for next year. If not, you can create a new cloud um, by going on to the AISD website, and the instructions are there. Um, it's really important that you have an email address, and I think the majority of the population here uh, at Keeling does have an email address, so that makes it a little bit faster. Um, but if you're having issues getting into the cloud at any point, Feel free to contact um, Linda Rivera, our council secretary and registrar, or you can contact me 
at 512-414-6700 and we can help you out and get access. But that is the major thing that we have going on right now. And I'd like to thank everyone out there who has um, been so gracious in donating to the Parent Support Office, to Keeling, especially during the um, Thanksgiving community meal. We had a great outpour of support, monetary, hands on deck, um, bringing in food, all kinds of things. And uh, because that was a first time event, it was very successful. We hope that we can continue to do that uh, for next year. And um, if anyone has any ideas for parental engagement for next year, um, let me know and I'm willing to help you out. And we'll get it all done. And thanks again. Thank you. All right, does anyone else have any other questions or comments or anything to share? I just want to say yes. thank you. I, my work schedule prevented me from attending the K-Maggies. This year I made sure to come last year because I was a new parent and just overwhelmed with what was Keeling all about. But um, clearly you all have been working very, very hard and doing great things. So I really appreciate it. And it's so great to come and hear about what's going to happen for next year. It makes me really grateful that Charlie's here. Well, thank you. And I um, just want to say, too, we have um, been fortunate enough for the last three years to have, um, I think it's the first time we've ever done it, but um, had the, uh, the meetings on video. So people have been able to watch when they are, thanks for the reminder, when they are not able to come, but they can watch later. Um, and I know I've had, I've actually had an experience with a teacher at back to school night saying, oh, we've met before. Oh, no, I, I think I just saw you on that YouTube video. So <laughs> they are being watched. I and had a school board member come up to me, at, never met him before, and say, I watched your video on, it was when we were in sixth grade, uh, on funding, <laughs> on budget, I think. Like, oh, okay, how do you know who I am? Yes. Yeah. So they are being watched, and um, thank you, Gita, for um, thinking of the idea and then making it possible for all of it, all of it. Because not only does she bring the camera, she gets here and she videos it, and then moves back and forth, no matter where we're moving to. But then she goes back home and takes it off the camera to her computer, and then uploads it on YouTube, and then lets everybody know. So thank you for doing that. And um, we have some good news. Uh, Gita found a replacement. Yay! sure what your last name is but it is Tammy right oh, yes. Sammy. 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 Sammy is going to be um, replacing Gita next year so videos can continue so thank you so much for doing this and um, I'm not sure if you've watched them in the past online but um, this is something that has been a value to our parents and community so thank you um, well I hope everyone has a successful end of the school year and don't forget I know um, I think both Principal Carter and Carter. Principal <laughs> Coburn and Director Carter had mentioned um, that there's a staff development day on the 27th. So don't, don't send your kids to school on the 27th. <laughs> they will not. There will, the teachers will not be here. So there's a four-day weekend coming up. So we have um, tomorrow and then four days next week and three days the next week, I believe. Yep. And that's mm -hmm. it. So, Oh, yes. One more thing. <laughs> that May 26th will be the last day for late okay. bus pickup. Oh, okay. Yes. And okay. then office hours, are they over soon too? All of that is over on May 26th. You'll be getting okay. um, that in Hornet Herald. We'll send a school messenger okay. about the shutdown of backpacks and late buses okay. and office hours. Everything after school, you can have your children back. <laughs> so, so I'm sure there'll be questions, but the last week of school, um, they usually don't bring any kind of backpack. I think it's nope. just maybe a bring sack, a sack yeah. lunch, yeah. maybe, and and yourself. So, and that might be new for sixth grade parents. So, um, uh, on the registration, online registration for enrollment, before back. Like two months ago, you had to put your homeschool. Do we still have to put our homeschool, or do you I think now? They're in now. Yeah. Everyone Everyone is in sure now. They're in. No. No. So put you in. If you're not in, if you're a new magna parent and you're not in, let Ms. Carter know. And I will email the right people to fix it. And please, please register. Um, this is the time of year when principals beg downtown for money, um, and it's nice to actually have all the students who are coming here registered before I ask. <laughs> Let's not make her beg. For, uh, for this because all of our kids are here and we have a bigger population next year. So everybody in Video Land, get your kids registered.
Uh, what's the role for, why, why don't we bring back Pax Lush? I've heard so many different stories. Do you know why? why? Just there's no real reason to, because there's not much homework coming back and forth. There's nothing they're carrying that is productive for school. Generally, they're holding <laughs> things that we would prefer be at home. <laughs> 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 Okay, well on that note, I would like to adjourn our meeting. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.